hello people in this video let us look at irritable bowel syndrome so this is a very common condition and uh, what will be there here these people will have uh, abdominal defecation they can have either diarrhea or constipation or both right so you will say predominantly whether it's diarrhea or predominantly whether it's constipation and these people have abdominal pain do not forget okay they have abdominal pain with abnormal defecation that is either diarrhea or constipation so what are the clinical features so these people will have pain remember there is colicky or um, the cramping pain this is in the lower abdomen and it's re relieved by defecation a very important point once they defecate this pain will go so let's add it here in the definition they'll have pain which is relieved by defecation okay they can have abdominal bloating uh, this bloating is not due to excessive intestinal gas so you should understand it is not due to intestinal gas there is abdominal bloating okay but it is not due to intestinal gas and these people will have alternate episodes of diarrhea or constipation based on uh, as they have both you have to find out whether they have predominantly diarrhea or predominantly constipation so do they have constipation or diarrhea guys no they have both alternating episodes so you have to decide guys you have to decide whether it's predominantly diarrhea or predominantly constipation if it is constipation they'll have uh, pellety stools remember and um, <clears throat> uh diarrhea will have frequent defecation but still they'll have low volume stools okay so they won't have some lot of uh, watery stool they don't lose lot of things like it it's not like that okay and they'll have passage of mucus so now there is a criteria is there guys there is a criteria called as rome 3 criteria rome the third criteria is for what irritable bowel uh, this is what syndrome right irritable bowel syndrome that is ibs right for irritable bubble syndrome you have rome 3 okay rome 3 so what is the criteria to call somebody as irritable bubble syndrome they should have pain abdomen uh, recurrent uh, pain abdomen so in 3 months at least uh, in the last 3 months every month they should have had at least three such days okay at least three such days they should have had where they have abdominal pain and this pain which has got relieved after defecation okay <clears throat> and then there is a change in the frequency of the stool and the form of the stool there is a change in the type of stool also so because many of us know what will happen before uh, defecating we may have some pain right but you will not notice any change in the form of the stool or the frequency of the stool so that is all is normal having some uh, pain um, uh, you know abdominal pain and then you go to the bathroom and you're fine that may be fine but it's not just that there is a change in the frequency of the stool and on set um, and the form of the stool also has changed okay what, what else you should see see here there is uh, um if it is for more than 6 months right then definitely you should be uh, careful right that's what they are saying and alarming features look at the alarming features uh, it's written down here alarming features means if somebody has these symptoms and and if they are greater than 50 years male gender if they have weight loss also if they have some nocturnal symptoms if they have some history of colon cancer if they have anemia rectal bleeding these are all are alarming features so basically they are expecting asking you to rule out some colonic cancer okay so these are all the clinical features now why does this bubble get irritated what is this bubble what is it who is irritating it some food some intolerant food okay that you have some food you don't your body is not able to manage like some short chain or carbohydrates like lactose fructose sorbitol these are called as food maps food maps food maps they can ask you just food maps in the exam okay this food maps is not nice for these guys what are these fermentable oligo di monosaccharides and polypols so this is a food maps you have to write this in the exam this is what can irritate the bowel so the these will get uh, fermented and this this will lead to the bloating etc okay and some non celiac gluten sensitivity they can have or they are intolerant to chemicals such as salicylates benzoates which are found in some food so in some food if there is salicylates or benzoate it sounds like so much like aspirin or something salicylates benzoates in some foods if it is there then they are intolerant to such things okay so what is food map yeah can you say food maps yeah it is nothing but food no fermentable fermentable oligo di monosaccharide and polyols okay uh, now coming to the gut microbiota and the next thing we want to blame is this gut microbiota biota so basically the bacteria in your small intestine have grown more overgrowth of the bacteria has happened so that is why you have to give probiotics or rifamix rifa probiotics and rifaximin okay which is a non absorbable antibiotic this you will see in many uh, videos right rifaximin 
non-absorbable antibiotic. Okay, with probiotic also you can give so that this gut microbiota settles down and grows well and not overgrows. Psychiatric illness can be there in these people like anxiety, depression and uh, somatization, neurosis, stress. They could have been sexually abused. They might have some stress. You'll have to check that out. Or they might have, have had a previous episode of gastroenteritis uh, because of salmonella, that's typhoid, right? Campylobacter, etc. So did you understand the main causes? Okay. So you have understood the causes of irritable bowel disease. Now look at the pathogenesis. So what will be there? You saw that the bacteria could have overgrown. <clears throat> so there is some gut inflammation which is low grade, not high grade, low grade uh, gut inflammation, immune activation. Then there are some sensitized neurons. So the mucosal mast cells will release histamine and tryptase. Okay. Uh, but this is not food allergy. Remember, this is not food allergy. Okay. So just go back here. This is food intolerance and not food allergy. Okay. So what you saw now. <clears throat> inflammation and all has happened histamine is there they are saying histamine is there tryptase is there yes so that but they are not calling it as an allergic reaction okay so you can treat all this with keto tiffin they are saying which is mast cell inhibitor right so basically now you are seeing that there is some low grade gut inflammation in, uh, so if there is actual inflammation of your gut what are you saying inflammatory bowel disease that is different right mm, so that uh, that will become uh, uh, inflammatory bubble disease is that Crohn's and ulcerative. Here some low grade infl inflammation is there, that's it, okay. So look at this people, they can have uh, predominantly diarrhea, predominantly constipation, right. So DIBS, CIBS, so this is diarrhea predominant uh, irritable bowel syndrome, constipation uh, predominant irritable bowel syndrome, okay. So here you have serotonergic, um, uh, that is serotonin is more, 5-HT is more in this case and there is diarrhea. Deficiency of this 5-HT3 will lead to constipation. So if just give 5-HT3 agonist, these people who have constipation, they may become fine, okay. So can you say now what you learned? Uh, I learned that um, uh, whenever there is constipation, there can be deficiency of some serotonin. Give serotonin that is 5-HT3, they'll be fine. Very good, very good. Now what are the investigations you'll order for these people? <clears throat> you will uh, check if there is any structural abnormality of the gut. So you can do some sigmoidoscopy, colonoscopy. You have to exclude colorectal cancer. You have to do a differential leukocyte count, a total leukocyte count, a complete blood count. That and all you will do standard, we know that. Fecal calprotectin. So basically this is, uh, if this is elevated, then there is some inflammation. Okay, that's what they are trying to say. If it is elevated, then there could be some inflammation. Okay, so that is why they are saying you measure this fecal calprotectin. Okay, <clears throat> now what are the differential diagnosis guys of uh, this uh, condition? That is irritable bowel syndrome. So if I have, um, you think that I have irritable bowel syndrome, what are the differentials that uh, would be there? So it could be colorectal cancer, right? If the person is of high age, it could be inflammatory bowel disease like Crohn's, ulcerative, It could be some other GI disease. Diarrhea predominantly means you have to exclude celiac disease, microscopic colitis, lactose intolerance, intolerance, bile acid diarrhea, thyrotoxicosis, okay, thyrotoxicosis. So there is excess thyroid means what? Metabolism is more so they can have diarrhea, yeah. So you'll have to also rule out parasitic infection, that is infestation, okay. So all this you have to rule out. So these are the differential diagnosis, okay, colorectal cancer. Uh, Crohn's ulcerative, other GI disease, uh, celiac disease, uh, microscopic colitis, uh, lactose intolerance, right? Bile acid diarrhea, there's some bile acid diarrhea, okay? Microscopic colitis. So all this you have to uh, rule out, okay, in these people. So look at the treatment now. Let's look at the treatment. So if somebody comes with you and you have confirmed, you have ruled out all the other conditions, so it's an irritable bowel syndrome, you have decided. Yes, we have moved to the treatment of irritable bowel disease. Now it's time to pay attention for the treatment. Come on. So you have confirmed that it is irritable bowel disease syndrome, sorry, syndrome. What will you do for these people? You will reassure and maybe they will become fine. If they don't become fine, then what to do? So if the symptoms persist, <clears throat> now, you have to decide whether they are having predominantly diarrhea or constipation or just pain and bloating. If they have predominantly diarrhea, 
then you have to r reduce this FODMAP, FODMAP and gluten free diet. Okay, that's what they are saying. So diet, try to control everything with diet. Avoid legumes, avoid dietary fiber, excessive dietary fiber you should avoid. So the causes of constipation, no, I mean treatment of constipation they are avoiding here. Okay, um, FODMAP or gluten free diet. Okay. Then anti-diarrheal drugs like uh, what are the anti-diarrheal drugs that you know? Dopiramide, codeine phosphate, cholestyramine. Okay, all this if you can, you can remember these names. At least remember lopiramide. Then you can give if the symptoms symptoms are persisting, you can give tricyclic antidepressants like amitriptyline, imipramine, etc. And then this antibiotic that's not absorbed, uh, rifaximin. Okay. Now let us move on to the constipation. If somebody has predominantly constipation, what you will do? Definitely you know how to treat constipation. You will give them uh, high, you will suggest to them via diet, try to manage high roughage diet. And then you, if symptoms still per se, if the person you can give isafil, isa, isafa gulla husk, right? That husk, uh, or they are giving some lactulose or macro gall. And they are talking about some prucalopride linac, low tide wow can you remember this these two names prucalopride linaclotide okay and then if still the persistence persist symptoms persist after all this whether it's diarrhea or constipation extra they're talking about some biofeedback therapy hypnotherapy relaxation therapy duloxetine what is duloxetine that is an antidepressant medication so all that they are trying okay now let us say it is neither of this uh, diet predominantly diarrhea or constipation they just have pain and bloating then what you will do then again the, that low FODMAP diet you have to remove wheat from their diet exclude dairy from their diet gluten free diet then what can these people eat wow okay then uh, if symptoms still persist you give them spasmolytics okay uh, like um, Maybe virin, peppermint oil, hyoscine, probiotics, rifaximin. This they are writing everywhere. So probiotics, rifaximin, and am amitriptyline, imipramine. All these are uh, tricyclic antidepressants. Also, you can give. Okay. So this is about the treatment. Let's look some more. So you can give them. Just in general, they are saying wheat-free diet, lactose exclusion, low FODMAP diet, gradual reintroduction of different food groups. A trial of gluten-free diet, probiotics, okay. Then look at this here. Eat regularly, avoid missing meals. Guys, focus here. What are we looking at? The treatment of irritable bubble syndrome. Very psychotherapy it looks like. Um, I mean, uh, more like working on the mind. Eat regularly, avoid missing meals. Take time to eat. Enjoy the food. <clears throat> Ensure adequate hydration. Drink lot of water. Avoid carbonated and caffeinated drinks. So stop coffee and all that. And those soda drinks, uh, reduce alcohol intake. Yeah, we will write this everywhere in medicine. Reduce intake of resistant starch and insoluble fiber. But I thought that um, the low carbohydrates only are the problem. Starch is a big one, right? But anyways, the resistant starch you should not eat. Avoid foods with artificial sweetness. What has artificial sweetness? Like ice creams and all may have artificial sweetness. Nowadays, most of the things come with artificial sweetener. That is their selling point, right? Whether you buy even a mint that you buy has artificial sweetener. Wheat-free diet, yeah, that we already told. Lactose exclusion diet, low a diet low on FODMAPs. What is FODMAP? Fermentable oligo dye and monosaccharides and polyols. Very good. So mostly diet they try to manage. Now if diet doesn't work, what are we saying? Tricyclic antidepressants like imipramine, amitriptyline, treat anxiety, anti-inflammatory drug like ketotifen, mesalazine, antibiotic which is not absorbable, rifaximin. And if the person has constipation, what will you give? 5-HT3, uh, right? Here they have written T4. Basically that is deficient, so you give that. Then you can give some uh, linaclotide, which we saw there, and lubiprostone. Wow. All these drug names, if you can remember, that's great. So there is a table here which says complementary and alternative therapies that you can do for these people. Massage, chiropractic, practic, chiropractic, uh, you can just try some massage, isn't it? Again, that comes there. Meditation, hypnosis, cognitive therapy. So all this you can do. And then herbal products, just, you know, Something uh, probiotics, some kind of a um, 
placebo kind of a treatment this looks like to me energy healing bioelectric electromagnetic field therapies wow reiki oh reiki therapy wow um have you gone to a reiki therapist actually there are some certified reiki therapists etc anyways then coming to ayurveda homeopathy traditional chinese medicine interesting so this is the one first thing i saw somewhere in allopathy that they are saying suggest an ayurvedic drugs to them okay so that's it about uh, irritable bowel syndrome guys hope you have understood um, it's a common condition abdominal pain relieved by defecation they can have diarrhea or constipation and um, so you can classify it as predominantly diarrhea or predominantly constipation you have the rome 3 criteria which says that the, in 3 months at least 3 days each day each month they would have had pain which is uh, improving with defecation there will be a change in the frequency and form of stool and uh, alarming features are uh, you should rule out uh, colorectal cancer etc and uh, this can happen because of diet and uh, sibo that small intestinal bacterial overgrowth psychiatric illness sexual abuse or because of previous episode of uh, salmonella or campylobacter pathogenesis there will be low grade gut gut inflammation immune activation neurons are sensitive they will uh, make the mast cells release histamine and tryptase so you can treat with anti inflammatory like ketotifen <clears throat> so you have diarrheal predominant or constipation predominant so that is called as dibs and cibs so in uh, constipation one there is deficiency of 5 ht3 so you can just give uh, 5 ht3 agonist or 5 ht4 agonist they are saying term sometimes that will cure them so investigations you will do for these people as that you will check if there is any structural abnormality of gut you will do blood blood test and you will check for um, sigmoidoscopy colonoscopy you will do rule out colorectal cancer fecal calprotectin you have to check if it is elevated that means that there is inflammation the differential diagnosis are colorectal cancer crohn's ulcerative <clears throat> and uh, it could be a celiac disease microscopic colitis lactose intolerance bile acid diarrhea thyrotoxicosis parasitic infestation etc so how will you treat you have to uh, reassure the patient and send him home if it is not fine then you have to check whether it's a diarrhea or uh, constipation or if there's pain and bloating if it is diarrhea you will just ask them to eat low fodmap gluten free diet remove fiber which if it is too much avoid legumes etc give anti diarrheal drugs like loperamide etc i mean uh, if this doesn't go then you can try with uh, tricyclic antidepressants rifaximin etc which is uh, and non absorbable antibiotic etc constipation you can give high roughage diet isafil gulla husk then uh, <clears throat> lactulose macrogol etc then you can give constipation drugs like linaclotide procalopride etc and if and let's move on to the side if they don't have any constipation or diarrhea they can uh, uh, you can just uh, manage with low fodmap diet exclude wheat exclude dairy gluten free diet or you can give some uh, drugs like um, spasmolytics like uh, peppermint oil hyoscine probiotic rifaximin amti sorry amitriptyline imipramine etc and mibar mibeverin so after all this if still symptoms persist then you can ask them to take some uh, duloxetine antidepressant basically relaxation therapy biofeedback hypnotherapy finally they are referring them to some reiki ayurvedic specialist etc <clears throat> meditation chiropractor so all this they are suggesting okay so this is all about irritable bowel syndrome bye bye